Hey again, everybody. Mr. Drummond here coming to you on Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, uh, April 1st, 2020. Um, still on our state mandated shutdown, uh, as you guys know, um, but trying to stay in touch and figured um, why not make another video, right? So um, what we're going to be talking about today, first of all, hope everybody's doing well still. Um, telling you this social distancing thing will work if we all do what we're supposed to do. You know, um, a lot of really smart people working on this problem. They're telling us to stay home. Okay. So do it if by any means, if you can. Okay. So hope this video finds you well. Okay. Keep taking care of yourself to keep taking care of your family. Okay. Um, even if that means staying away from some folks. Okay. Um, just, some, that's what they need for you to be doing to help them out right now. So, um, no, it's hard, um, but uh, hope everyone's hanging in there and dealing with it as well as they can. Um, so I thought as a little distraction, uh, we might look at uh, the next topic in your assignments for this uh, break. And uh, we talk a little bit about the economy, okay, and what the government can do to influence it right? The government and the economy. How does that, how do those two things work together? How does the government influence the economy? So what we're going to talk about today, um, you know, when we think about, you know, a presidential election, what's one of the big issues that everybody wants to talk about when it comes to electing a president? It's the economy, right? Is the current president, if the pre current president's running for re-election, is the economy doing well? Uh, is it struggling? Who does that, you know, is that going to help the person running against the president? Okay. Um, members of Congress. Okay. How we view how well the government's doing by, in many ways, is how the economy is doing, right? That's kind of how, that's one of the ways that we grade our elected uh, representatives. Oh, the economy is bad. The government must not be doing its job. Okay. So what we're going to talk about today are the things that president, the president and the Congress can control when it comes to the economy and a few things that they don't control. OK, all of the things we're going to talk about today would come under the umbrella of the federal government. But what we're going to talk about are two distinct areas. OK, so a couple of little vocabulary words to get through uh, before we get into it. There's two areas of policy that can influence how well the economy performs. One is called fiscal policy. And before we get into that, even we should talk about what the economy is, right? What is the economy, okay? Um, the economy is all about dollars and cents, right? How much is this country producing? How much money is available in the system? You know, what are some key indicators we look at? You know, the GDP, the gross domestic product, how much output does this country have of making goods and, and providing services, okay? Um, Unemployment rates, that's probably the big one, right? Do people have jobs? Are they secure financially, okay? The economy, is there are, is credit available? Can people get credit, right? Loans to borrow things, or to borrow money to buy things, okay? We're looking at how much power does the country have when it comes to producing things? How much money uh, do citizens have? and have access to? Do they have jobs? Or, or do people feel confident in their financial situations? And that's what we're talking about, okay? When we talk about the economy, all right? So two areas we're gonna talk about today. One is called fiscal policy, and one is called monetary policy, okay? Let's start with fiscal, okay? Fiscal is the stuff that everybody knows about. You know, everybody has, has, uh, is, uh, probably aware by now that the government taxes you, right? The government collects money from citizens in the form of taxes. Okay. And then the government uses that money to do stuff. They spend it. So fiscal policy is taxing and spending, and that's it. Fiscal policy is controlled by the Congress and the president together. They work on it. Okay, how much money is the government going to spend? Put, you know, 
in the government spends stuff on any number of things, right? Big and small. You know, the government spends money on buying, uh, building aircraft carriers. They also spend money on paper clips, right? For government buildings, right? The, the government spends a ton of money. They're a huge buyer in the economy, okay? So whether or not they're out there spending, 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 or spending less, that's gonna affect how quickly the economy goes, right? The other thing is taxation, right? Taxes. How much money is the government gonna take from citizens in the form of taxes, all right? Those are the only two levers that the Congress and the president can pull. That's fiscal policy, all right? Taxes and spending. You can only move them two ways, right? Up and down. You can move taxes up, tax people more. You can move them down, you can tax people less. The government can either spend more or it can spend less. Those are the only two. So if we're trying to influence the economy as the Congress and the president, two ways to do it. Taxing, spending, right? Taxing, spending. Those are the only two levers you can move. Now, you can, those, they're powerful levers. You can do a lot with it, um, but that's it. Those are the only two things that the Congress and the president can do, and that's called fiscal policy. Remember, fiscal. Congress and the president deciding how much to tax, how much to spend. All right, and we're going to talk more about that in a moment. The other side of the, the house is monetary policy, right? What word is in monetary? Money, right? Monetary policy, how much money is available out in the system, all right? And we're going to give a few ways that the monetary policy is uh, carried out, but who carries it out? It's actually not the president and Congress. It's something called the Federal Reserve Bank, all right? We all know about Huntington Bank and Home Savings and Loan Bank and uh, First National Bank and you know whatever, all these banks. The Federal Reserve Bank is the United States Bank, right? It's the, it's the bank of the banks, all right? It controls what we call monetary policy in the United States. It sets interest rates, okay? Um, interest is the amount of money you pay. It's how much a loan costs to get, and we'll talk more about that later. All right, um, it lends money out to um, um, private banks, okay? It's part of the government and it's independent too. It's kind of a weird um, hybrid. It's run by something called a board of governors, okay? Those people are appointed by the president, but the interesting thing about the Federal Reserve Bank is they don't need the president's permission or Congress's permission to carry out and change monetary policy, right? They work independent of needing permission from the president or Congress, okay? And they control monetary policy, how much money is available out in the system. There's three things that the, basically that the Fed, sometimes we call the Federal Reserve Bank the Fed, right? It's the central bank for the United States, the bank's bank, all right? It regulates banking in the United States and it loans money out to banks in the United States, and it, it does many other things, but the three levers that they can move are interest rates, okay? Interest, if I loan you 10 bucks, all right, and I wanna make a little money on it, I'm gonna say, hey, I'll, I'll loan you 10 bucks at you know 2% interest, okay? Uh, or I'll, 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 you know, uh, loan you a uh, hundred dollars right at five percent interest or whatever i say okay you're gonna pay me back my hundred bucks and then if it's five percent or six percent or whatever it is you're gonna pay me back 105 bucks right or if it's five percent 105 six percent 106 it's how banks make money right is interest okay the federal reserve bank sets interest rates in the united states we're going to talk about how they can influence the economy by moving interest rates up and down. All right. Another thing that they do is they set what is called the reserve requirement for banks. Okay. A reserve requirement for banks is how much money they have to keep on hand to cover people's deposits, right? You go in and give a bank a hundred bucks. They don't just sit around and keep your hundred bucks. They loan that hundred dollars out to make money right? They use that money to 
make other loans, okay? The Federal Reserve says you got to keep a portion of that money back, right? You got to hold on, you got to hold it in reserve so that you can cover in a certain day if people come back and want to take their money out, okay? So the reserve requirement is how much money banks have to hold on to of what people give them in deposits, right? Again, you give them a hundred bucks, they're not just gonna put it out in a, back in a vault. They're gonna use that hundred dollars, they're gonna put it together with a bunch of other people's hundred dollars, and they're gonna loan it out. And they're gonna earn interest on that money. And they're going to make money by charging that interest. The last thing that the Federal Reserve does is what we call open market operations, okay? What that means is um, the federal government, when they need a loan from people, uh, they'll issue bonds and, and these things called securities, which are basically IOUs. So you give the uh, federal government, um, you know, $100 now, and they give you a, 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 a security or a bond that says they'll pay you back more than that in the future, right? Um, Sometimes the Federal Reserve will go out and buy those back from banks. Okay, they'll buy those from banks. What do you use to buy things? You use money. So you put, you're putting money into the system, okay? So there's a lot to break down in this, all right? If your head's spinning a little bit right now, that's okay, all right? But let's stop and recap. There's two things the government can do to influence the economy. One set of things they can do is called fiscal policy. That's controlled by Congress and the president, and that's taxing and spending, okay? The other thing, the other section of policy we call monetary policy. Monetary policy is all about how easy is it to get money in the system? How much money is out there in the system? The Federal Reserve Bank controls that, and they do that in three ways. They set interest rates, how expensive is it to get a loan? They set reserve requirements on banks, how much of the money that banks get do they have to keep? And they do what is called open market operations, which is buying these IOUs from banks to give the banks more money and to give um, and to put more money into the system. So we'll go into each of those a little more detail here in a minute. Let's start with fiscal policy, all right? And I came up here, I don't I hope you can see this, all right. This is my little uh, analogy that I'm gonna use, okay? When it comes to the government and the economy. Imagine we got a campfire going here, okay? Or if you wanna think about it as a, a car going down the highway, that's another good way to think of it, okay? If anyone's ever been camping or if you've ever been at a bonfire, okay? You want the fire to be strong enough that you can maybe roast marshmallows on it or that you can stay warm by it if it's a cool night, all right? And you don't want it to go out, right? You don't want it to fizzle and that with no, it's not doing anybody any good. You also don't want it to burn up and start a forest fire, okay? Same way with a car, right? If you're on the highway, if you want to go 65, 70 miles an hour, so you keep up with traffic and get where you're going, that's good. You don't want to be stopped on the side of the road, but you also don't want to go 120 miles an hour because that's dangerous. The economy is the same way. The government will either throw logs on the fire of the government or of, of the economy to get it going faster, or they will put water on the fire to kind of cool it down, right? If you think about a car, the government will either press the gas to make the economy go faster, keep up with, with traffic so people don't get run over, or you might have to hit the brakes so that the economy doesn't overheat and go too fast and and you get a speeding ticket or you get into a wreck, okay? What does that mean with the economy, all right? Is the economy growing? Is it expanding or is it contracting? And what do we need it to do in that moment, okay? And you might say to yourself, well, why would we ever want the economy to shrink? Isn't, you know, the more money, the better? Well, believe it or not, no, okay? Just like you don't wanna go 125 miles an hour in a car, in the high, on the highway because it's dangerous. And just like you don't want to go um, have a bonfire turn into a forest fire, you don't want the economy to go too quickly or else we get something called inflation. All right, that's another vocabulary word. Inflation means we've got too much money 
chasing after too few goods. Okay. We, people have a lot of money. That's great. What are people going to do when they have money? They're going to spend that money. If you are a producer and you've got a lot of people that have enough money to buy your product, what are you going to do to your prices? You're going to raise those prices up. Okay. People, you know, we see the rise of prices in the economy. Okay. And that extra money that people have has no more buying power because people have raised their prices. We've put too much money into the economy. Manufacturers and producers of, of goods raise their prices as a result of that because, hey, everyone's going and saying, you know, if I want, you know, I, I can afford a new pair of shoes. Everyone's going and buying the newest Jordans or whatever. What are What's Nike going to do? They're going to raise their prices, okay? Yes, it's good that people have money, but what good is that money if, you know, a loaf of bread is now $25, right? That money has less value, okay? So we want, it's like a big balancing act, right? Just like when you're driving a car, okay? You want to give the car enough gas so that you keep up with the pace of traffic, right? You don't want to be left in the dust, okay? But you also don't want to go 125 miles an hour either, okay? By the same token if the economy is starting to slow down if people are losing their jobs if people have a tough time you know people aren't buying people are kind of contracting their uh, they're not going out and spending they're not buying that new car they're not buying that new refrigerator they're putting off these things okay but we need to hit the gas right we need to throw a couple logs right on our economic fire okay so let's talk about how we do that okay I think we're just gonna talk about fiscal policy today, all right? And then we'll make another video about monetary policy, okay? Um, because I don't wanna hit you guys with too much right away, all right? This is a kind of complicated topic. So let's just talk about fiscal policy, right? Let's just talk about fiscal policy, taxing and spending controlled by Congress and the president, okay? So we've got two, fiscal logs we can throw on the fire of the economy if we need it to speed up, right? Say the economy's starting to burn out, right? We see people losing their jobs, unemployment's going up, the economy's producing less. We need to kind of give it some gas, right? We need to kick it, kick it in the rear end a little bit and get it going so that people can have jobs, people can afford things that they need. We got two things we can do. We can take taxes and we can lower them. And we can take government spending and we can increase it. How is that going to get the fire burning hotter? How is that going to get the economy moving faster? Well, think about it. If you make $50,000 a year and every year you pay $10,000 in tax, at the end of the year, you've got $40,000 to spend. If all of a sudden the federal government says, you know what, you only owe us $6,000 in taxes. What do you now have? An extra $4,000. What are you going to do with an extra $4,000? You're going to spend it, right? You're going to spend it. So say you spend it on a car. Say you use it for a down payment on a car, okay? How does that get the economy going? Well, that car company just sold a car, right? If a lot of people are doing that and the demand for cars goes up, what's going to happen to um, the price of a car? It's going to go up. When the price of a car goes up, companies are encouraged to do what? Make more cars. What do you need to make more cars? You need more people working. So what's that going to cause car companies to do? They're going to go hire people. Those people are now gonna have a job. Those people with a job are going to get a paycheck. And what are they gonna do with that paycheck? They're gonna go out and spend it. Maybe they spend it on a refrigerator. Well, Maytag starts to sell more refrigerators. The demand for refrigerators goes up. What happens to the price of a refrigerator? It goes up. Now Maytag is encouraged in the market to produce more of that. So what are they going to do? How do you produce more things? You either call back people that were laid off or you hire new people. Either way, the economy is growing. 
Those people now have a job, they get a paycheck every week and they put, spend it into the economy. You see how that works? Okay. Now, the problem with this, okay, is that when we cut taxes, sometimes people don't always do what with that? Spend it, right? A lot of people are gonna save it. If you save the money, you're not putting it into the economy. The more wealthy you are, the more likely you are to save money. So some people, Democrats would say, hey, tax cuts are good, but we better make sure we're giving them to the right people. If you give it to people that already have a lot of money, they might just save it. Republicans would say, if you give tax breaks to people at the top, people that own businesses, if a business doesn't have to pay as much money in taxes, they got money to invest in their plant, okay? When you invest in a plant, maybe you buy a new machine, the person that, the company that makes that machine gets business, okay? They call that trickle down economics, all right? Two theories, right? There's the theory that says, let's give the tax cuts to people at the bottom. They're the ones that are most likely to spend it. People at the top might save it. Or it's, let's give it to the people at the top. They're the ones that create jobs. You know, if they're a big corporation, if they don't have to pay as much in tax, they'll have more money to invest in their um, company. That would create jobs. They might hire more people. That'll create jobs. The argument against that is they might also just keep it. Okay, so that's how cutting taxes can boost the economy. By the same token, if we need to slow the economy down, if this economic fire is starting to turn into a forest fire, what can we do? We gotta pour a little water on it. How are we gonna pour water on the economy if it's moving too fast, prices are going up too fast? We're going to raise taxes. We're taking money out of the economy, okay? If I owe $8,000 in taxes every year, and now I owe $10,000 in taxes, well, now I might put off that um, big purchase I need to make. Maybe I don't go out to dinner twice a month. Maybe I just go out once a month, okay? Maybe I don't take that big trip. Maybe I have a staycation, right? I have less money. I got less money to play with, right? So I'm not gonna spend as much, right? When we have less money, we need to spend less, okay? So we slow the economy down, we bring prices back down, okay? And let's go through that same cycle, all right? I get my taxes increased. I've got less money. I put off the purchase of a car. People throughout the economy make the same decision. So now Ford is selling fewer cars. They're going to lower the price of their cars, okay? When prices are lower, people, you know, supply and demand. People are less incentivized to make them. If you don't need to make as many cars, what can Ford do now? They lay people off. Maybe that Ford worker says, you know what? We can get another year out of that refrigerator. We don't need to buy a new one right now. So now Maytag loses sales in their refrigerators. All right, well, if Maytag is not selling as many refrigerators, they're gonna lower their prices. They don't need as many workers now because they're not incentivized to produce refrigerators. So now they lay people off and it's a, you know, it's like dominoes, right? You knock one domino over and the rest start to fall. It's the exact opposite though of when we were putting logs on the economic fire. When people have more money to spend, they spend it. When people had less money to spend, they spent less, right? They didn't go out and do those things. Demand in the economy dropped. When demand drops, prices drop. When prices drop, companies make less stuff. When companies make less stuff, they don't need as many people to make it. So they lay people off. Now they've lost their job. They don't have as much money to spend. All right. And it sounds brutal and it is. It's not an easy thing to do, right? Nobody wants that. But there have been times in our country where we've had, you know, out of control inflation and that doesn't help anybody either. So these are hard choices that elected leaders have to make. Okay. So First fiscal policy, first fiscal thing we can do is taxing, right? Taxing, taxes go up, the economy goes down. Taxes go down, the economy goes up. That's an oversimplification, obviously, all right? The other fiscal thing that we can do is we can do spending, right? The federal government is a big, big, big buyer in the economy, right? 
They buy a lot of stuff from steel to, like we said, like from steel to make aircraft carriers to paper clips, right? And everything in between. If the federal government wants to, and we see this right now, the federal government has, in the face of this coronavirus, they're going to spend $2 trillion, right? With a T, trillion, they're spending $2 trillion to try to kick the economy back into gear, all right? They're going to start spending all this stuff, all right? So say um, President Trump's been talking about infrastructure, right? Say the federal government is start is going to give a billions and billions of dollars to make roads, bridges, and, and high-speed rail. Well, do roads, bridges, and rail road tracks just spring up out of nowhere? No, you need workers, right? The, the government spends money and it increases demand in the whole economy because the U.S. government is so big, right? They got, <coughs> excuse me, they got so much money to spend, okay? They can print their own money. The United States has great credit. We can borrow it. We can print it. We got all kinds of, we are a, the federal government is a big, big, you know, it's like a big, big fat guy jumping in a pool, right? And the whole, the water level goes up. I mean, they are a huge player. If they start to spend more, then demand in the whole economy goes up. Then prices go up. Then people hire more people. Uh, then companies hire more people. Okay. But if we take this road and bridges thing, okay, say uh, ABC uh, construction company gets a federal contract to build a bridge, right? They get contracts to build five bridges. Okay. Well, shoot, we've only got 10 workers. We better go out and hire another 10, right? So now those people have jobs. So what do you get when you have a job? You get a paycheck. When you get a paycheck, you have to get to spend it a little bit, right? You might go out to dinner a couple more times a month. Might buy that new, uh, you know, uh, uh, car you've had your eye on. You might uh, say, you know what? The hot water heater has been uh, acting up. Let's replace it, right? individuals not just the federal government now individuals have more money demand goes up again okay so you see how that works when the federal government spends okay when they say hey let's get out there and let's build stuff let's buy stuff let's bring demand up demand goes up prices go up companies are encouraged to spend more okay when companies are encouraged to spend more they are i'm sorry to make more they got to hire more people to do it when the companies have to hire more people to do it, then that's more people with a paycheck, all right? And the demand goes up again, all right? And we get the economy moving and moving, okay? Now, the other side of that, maybe the economy is moving too fast, all right? Maybe we're starting to see inflation, that price, there's too much money in the system and it's chasing too few goods, right? Companies, you know, have all these prospective buyers. They got, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, people that want to buy their product. So what are they going to do? Well, we're going to raise prices a little bit because now we can um, charge more, all right? When people, uh, because there's so many people that can afford our product, we're going to bump up prices a little bit. Again, inflation hurts consumers because it makes goods more powerful and it makes the money we have less valuable, really, right? Uh, you know, in Germany after World War II, uh, in, we, they had hyperinflation where um, the, the money was almost worthless. People would burn it because it was more valuable as a fuel for heating their homes than it was to go out and buy things, right? So we don't want, the, we want money to be able to buy things without prices going through the roof, all right? So inflation's not a great, we want a little bit of inflation, but we don't want crazy inflation. So what do we do? We got to slow the economy down. So the federal government steps back from the economy and they say, we're going to spend less. We're not going to build all these bridges. We're not going to invest in, uh, you know, uh, building a, a new uh, courthouse, a federal courthouse somewhere. We're not going to do all these things. When maybe we um, cut back on some services, right? We, um, the federal government steps out of the economy. They start to spend less. Since the federal government is so big, when they start spending less, demand in the whole economy goes down. When demand goes down, prices go down. As prices go down, companies aren't going to make as many products. So when they don't need to make as much, they're going to lay people off. They're gonna make cuts. 
people get laid off, they don't have a steady income anymore, they don't spend as much, and the whole economy starts to slow down, okay? That's fiscal policy, okay? We're gonna talk more about this, all right? I don't expect you to understand it all right now, but long story short, the federal government in the person of the Congress and the president have two things they can do. They can increase or decrease taxes, they can increase or decrease spending. Sometimes when the economy starts to slow down, you gotta kick it into gear. You gotta do things that expand the economy. What expands the economy? Cutting taxes, raising spending. Sometimes the economy starts to go real fast and you, oh my gosh, we're gonna crash, we're gonna burn up, we're, we're, too, we're overheated. We gotta slow it down. We gotta take taxes and raise them so people have less money in their pocket to spend up th on things. We gotta take government spending and decrease it. So demand is pushed down in the economy to get prices under control so that a loaf of bread isn't $25, okay? Might be great to have a million dollars, but if bread is $500, it's really not any better than having not a lot of money, okay? So inflation makes every dollar less valuable. So yeah, you got a lot of money, but it doesn't really buy you much. That's when we gotta contract, shrink the economy, okay? So a lot of info there. Make sure you're asking me questions on Google Classroom. Make sure you're asking me questions on Remind. Make sure you're sending me a, an email. Um, I'm gonna have another Zoom meeting probably on Thursday or probably Friday actually. Uh, hopefully we can get a few people to come to that and we can get some questions answered. Um, regardless, uh, anything that you need from me, please reach out to me. Uh, whether you're one of my students or whether you're um, someone that sees this video elsewhere, my email is johnjohn.drummond, D-R-U-M-M-O-N-D, at youngstownk 12oh dot us all right thanks for your uh kind attention hope everybody's uh, doing well uh staying safe and we'll talk to you soon bye-bye